you could please, we got a lot of people in here. Um, please take your seats if you have a seat. And no uh, inside conversations while we're holding the meeting, please. Yes. Um, let's see. Twenty one. Yeah, yeah, they're twenty one. They yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I see. I see some Boy Scouts standing in the back. Okay. If 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 we can, if, if, let's, I think uh, you got to go through all the public hearings and stuff yeah. first. But all right. So let's start with our invocation and our pledge of allegiance, please. Today, um, we will have Dr. Lewis Johnson, Fairhope Avenue Baptist Church, uh, giving our our invocation. Welcome, sir. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you today for the blessing that you have bestowed upon all of us, allowing us to reside in Fairhope, Alabama. Father God, we thank you for the leadership that you have ordained for our community. And I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would fill them with wisdom, grant them discernment, and Father God, that they would make decisions that would be in the best interest of the citizens of our community to make this an even more special and wonderful place for us to live, work, and worship. Father God, I pray for the discourse of this meeting, that it might be amicable, peaceable, and civil, and that we would do all things decently and in order as you have prescribed. Bless us each, every one, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. It is in his name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. All right, guys. All right. Guys, if I can get someone to approve our minutes from our March 21st, 24th. I'll make a motion. We approve the, the minutes from the council meeting and the work session. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. All right. Um, we will have a report from our lovely mayor. <laughs> and you have a crowd. You have a crowd. We've got a lot of important things to talk about tonight, so I'm glad. Yes. First, um, I am going to call somebody up in just a second, but before I do that, I have a couple announcements that I want to um, to make. First, um, we have um, this month is Child Abuse Prevention Month, so we are going to be recognizing that tonight. In there we go, right over here, from Baldwin County Child Advocacy, it's Tina, correct? Tina from Baldwin County Child Advocacy is here, and this is talk about child abuse. Come on up. Child Abuse Prevention Month, whereas child abuse prevention in a community problem, in a community problem and fi finding solutions depends on the involvement among people throughout the community. Whereas statistics show that children who are abused and neglected are escalating each year, which means all citizens should become more aware and become more involved. Whereas effective child abuse prevention programs succeed because of partnerships created among social service organizations, schools, religious organizations, and law enforcement agencies. Also, youth serving prevention programs offer positive alternatives for young people and encourage youth to develop strong ties to their community. So therefore, I, Sherry Sullivan, as Mayor of Fairhope, do hereby proclaim April as Child Abuse Prevention Month in Fairhope and call upon all citizens community agencies, religious organizations, medical facilities, and businesses to increase their participation in our efforts to prevent child abuse. So tonight, I'm very happy to present this to the Baldwin County Child Advocacy. They do great work on behalf of our community and also on behalf of our police department, who I know is work, works with them quite often. So thank you for what you do. Would you like to say a few words? Yeah, thank, you. thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for being here. I also have one more proclamation, and this is for National Public Safety Telecommunications Week, Chief. And this is our dispatchers who work for us every day behind the scenes. They are the unsung heroes of our police department. 
Amen. Thank y'all for being here. So we are proclaiming it. Actually, next week is um, National Public Safety Telecommunications Week. So I says, whereas emergencies can occur at any time that require police, fire, or emergency medical services, and whereas when an emergency occurs, the prompt response of police officers, firefighters, and paramedics is critical to the protection of life. Whereas the safety of our police officers and firefighters is dependent upon the quality and accuracy of information obtained from citizens who telephone the City of Fairhope Emergency Communications Center. And public safety telecommunicators are the first and most critical contact our citizens have with emergency services. Whereas public safety telecommunications are the single vital link for our police officers and firefighters by monitoring their activities by radio, providing them information and ensuring their safety. Whereas public safety telecommunicators for the City of Fairhope have contributed substantially to the apprehension of criminals, suspension, suppression of fires, and treatment of patients. And whereas each dispatcher has exhibited compassion, understanding, and professionalism during the performance of their job in the past year. So therefore, I, Sherry Sullivan, Mayor of Fairhope, do hereby proclaim April 14th through 20th as National Public Telecommunications Week in the City of Fairhope. All right, guys. Very good. Thank you guys for your service. Yeah, thank you guys. They do great work, and like I said, they are the unsung heroes of the police department. They're the ones behind the scenes doing a lot of the work. Um, before I call up two more folks, I also want to announce, and this is something that will be near and dear to Councilman Burrell's heart. Um, the City of Fairhope was um, fortunate to receive $3 million in federal funding for the HL Sunny Callahan Airport. Um, actually, this is for some land adjacent to the airport. We received this notification last week that um, Senator Britt and Congressman Call had secured this money for us through an infrastructure um, appropriation to be able to develop that manufacturing land that we have there on the west side of the airport. This is something that folks won't see probably for about a year now. Um, that's when the money will be appropriated and will, and will kind of come down. But we're going to be working on designs, working behind the scenes to do some stuff. This is huge for Fairhope and for the airport. Again, this is some of the last um, manufacturing land that we have in Fairhope. So being able to develop that into a small industrial park to be able to um, have some support services there for the airport, but build out this facility with streets, water, infrastructure, electric, all that kind of stuff. Um, this money will be a jump start to doing that. So thank you so much to Senator Britt and to Congressman Call for their you know investment in the Fairhope community. And again, look for more information for on this um, you know in the next year. Or so another great project that we'll have ongoing. So, and with that, I'd like to call um, Alan Samry and Coach. Y'all want to come up? They're here to talk to us about um, a project of single tax and um, something for historic preservation on a self-guided tour of our historic buildings. Thank you. This project started about three or four years ago. We had a meeting with the mayor and Fairhope Single Tax Education Team. There's eight of us that collaborated, collaborate, collaborated on this. And uh, this is what we came up with. I told Alan I thought it was kind of large, so we made a smaller one for the tourists to walk around. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Um, of course, you all, many of you know Coach Miller and myself, and so this is just a project that we were really excited to work on. Um, it took us, because of COVID, about four years, and so, um, but we had cooperation from everyone, and I want to say that I really want to stress that because um, we had, uh, the building department has all those wonderful uh, records for the historic properties in Fairhope, and then uh, the library has newspapers.com, which is a valuable resource for us researchers to go ahead and write up these brochures and the research that goes into each description on each plaque. And of course, um, Fairhope Single Tax Corporation, uh, which I know you all partner with on a lot of great things. And so uh, you'll see two of our plaques right on Gaston Plaza now. So uh, one is for Gaston Motors and the other is for Gaston Auto Livery. Also had cooperation from business owners, all super important for us. Um, they're all, pretty much all of them on here are lessees. And so they were excited to like, hey, let me have a plaque. Uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Shelly uh, Springer was one. And of course, Luann uh, barnhill Harold. those are both business owners, Fairhope Pharmacy and, and the Fair Fairhope Summit Inn, respectively. We're really excited about getting those plaques. And so we invite you to uh, take a walking tour. Um, Coach Miller's doing one 
this Saturday as part of the Alabama uh, Walking Tours History, the statewide program. And so he's going to do buildings 11 through 20 on our tour. And uh, keep that in mind because he's actually going to get you in a couple of buildings on the Coastal Alabama Community College campus. And that's, I'm looking at the council and the mayor, but that's for everyone behind me. That's right. You know, uh, like I said, really excited about it. And then you can just pick up a brochure around town in the Welcome Center. Also, Fairhope Single Tax website has all this information as well. So you can just go to the website and it says historic plaques and it lists them all in order of the walk. So uh, thank you for your time um, and thank you for your service. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I have one more announcement under my comments, and that's from Chief Hollinghead. Um, she'd like to talk about her retirement, and then that will close out my comments. Thank you. Okay. I'm glad that we have such a uh, big crowd here to witness this tonight. Um, so I want to say thank you for allowing me this moment to come up here and, and recognize one of our officers that's retiring. Um, actually, we can get Officer C and Kumba to come in here. And it's not C that's retiring. It's our four, his four-legged partner that's retirement. So, but uh, we would like to just take this opportunity and publicly recognize uh, the retirement of one of our canine service dogs tonight. His name is Kumba. Uh, Kumba has served our community for six years. He's been faithful, devoted, and a hardworking team member of our department who definitely deserves recognition before he leaves. Um, I don't think he knows that he's retiring. <laughs> I'm not quite sure he's ready for it, but we know it's time. So we, um, we realize that uh, it's, it's time for him to uh, sit back and enjoy the rest of his time just chilling out with uh, Officer C. So everybody always wants to know what happens with canine, um, with our canine dogs when, when they do retire. And uh, he is actually going to be a permanent member of the C family. So he will be there um, and live out the rest of his days with that family. But um, also I want to recognize Officer C. Uh, he is actually going to step away from his canine uh, position here at the police department. He's still with us. He's not going anywhere. Um, so he's expected to come to work every day. He can leave Kumba at home. Um, but we want to recognize him also for his commitment to our department. Being a canine officer is, um, it takes a lot of work. It's a lot of hard work. And it is a huge commitment uh, with the department. So again, we want to thank him for everything that he's done and just wish Kumba well. Thank you. Who's taking his place, Chief? Uh, we've actually got... Cody Baker, who's going to be the new canine handler, and we have already purchased our new canine, oh. who is uh, Luca. Oh, Luca. He is a 15-month-old Malawa. All right, very good. So, if I could get the two of y'all to come forward. Come so, we want to present this back to Kumba it's for your loyal and devoted service to the Fairhope community. We express our deep gratitude and appreciation. Thank you. Thank you, Kumba. Thank you. <laughs> Kumba doesn't know. So sad. Hmm. All right, guys. Okay, all right. I'm just going to ask if, um, as we move along, if, if people are moving in and out of the doors, um, please um, do it with discretion. Um, do it quietly as we continue our meetings, okay? Um, just out of respect. Agenda item number three is, is our public participation. It's going to be on agenda item six through 29. Uh, agenda item number five is a public hearing. Um, so if you have any re any regards on agenda items 6 through 29 please come to the podium state your name your address and your issue for only agenda items 6 through 9 six all right 6 through 29 29 yes yeah excuse me i'm fallible 6 through 29 all right moving on um, council comments we're going to start down with the Keep mine brief. I uh, just uh, 
want to echo what the mayor said about the, the grant that we've been awarded uh, uh, to improve the, the land on the west side of the airport and put in infrastructure there that'll allow us to um, to utilize that land for light industrial that's that's his own I believe uh, Hunter I got your text <laughs> I believe it's light industrial and it's some of the only light industrial land that we have in the entire city so we kind of we covet that land and, and uh, hopefully you know it will one day provide good jobs for people here because that's that's I think what we're here for is to improve our quality of life and if we can keep our children here make a good honest living here then uh, that's, that's what we want to do with that so, uh, that was great news that we got touche touche uh, no, no comments for me tonight. I'm just glad to see a lot of people here engaged in the civic process. I asked if public participation, but I thought that was on agenda 28. Can I? Can we get up and do that? Or is that what you were saying? I'm sorry, we're confused. Yeah, I think you meant one through 27, actually, Council President. Yeah, yeah that's right. It's, it's, that's okay, right. so it, 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 that's right. It would have been. It would have been. Well, uh, it's one through, yeah, 27. One through, six one through 20, 27. Six through 27. Six through 27, guys. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Good catch. Uh, yeah, very good. That's it. All right, Councilman. Uh, no, I, I briefly uh, thanks to everybody that came out to support uh, FIF uh, last Friday with the golf tournament and then their pickleball first mm -hmm. annual inaugural pickleball tournament. Um, hopefully, it'll be an annual event. Uh, Councilman Conyers and I played. So did uh, Attorney Williams. Jimmy and I were awesome. We dominated the field for most of the day. Quit bragging. Uh, Quit bragging. Uh, I think I think our two you got teams, footage. You got footage. Our, I think our two teams combined went 0 for 10. So uh, it was not not our most successful outing, but we had a great time, uh, and, and it's a great event. So thanks to everybody that put that on. I'm glad it was successful. No comment. That's my bone. All right. Well, I think the mayor's tournament went well. Um, I was not able to participate, but from what I understand, it was a great outing. We thank um, FIFA and all that, that, that puts that on for the mayor. Um, no one has spoke on that, so I will. Um, so, um, and I think um, Sunday they actually had the employees tournament. I was not able to attend that. I hope that went well as well. Um, so, um, but other than that, I have no other comments, and we're going to move right along. Um, into agenda item number five, which is a public hearing for application for a lounge liquor license for Laura Wiggins, um, two shots in, <laughs> incorporated DBA, two shots in, 333 South Greeno Road, Fairhope, Alabama, 36532. Um, we will open that public hearing, so anyone that wants to um, speak on that public hearing, you have three minutes to come up and speak on this particular agenda item. All right. All right. Seeing none, we'll proceed. Um, uh, Chief or Jeff, there was no, everything is good. Okay. All right. Well, we will now close the public hearing. Um, guys, can I get a motion um, for someone to approve the license? The license? I think that was it. I got Kumba. Thank you, yeah. Kumba. <laughs> right on, brother. <laughs> yeah, Kumba's with me. I got you. I get a motion and a second. Go. Yeah, you got a motion. A All right, do I have a second? All right. Have a motion and a second uh, to approve the liquor license. Um, any further discussion? Yeah, I'd kind of like no. I'm not exactly sure where the 333 South Greeno Road is. Uh, so it's a... The little oh, uh, it's, uh, it's in the shopping center there. Yes, yes. sir. Yes. Right by the Asian the old Strix. Strix. Yes. So it's a it's a um, sold okay. opportunity buyer and seller. I got you. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's, it's existing. There. It's existing. Okay. Um, no further brick and mortar. Same spot. Just going through the process. Okay. Any further discussions? All right. Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. All right. Motion carries. Congratulations. Uh, two shots in. All right. All right. Uh, number six, agenda item number six is a final adoption. It's an ordinance annexation of the city of Fairhope property. Uh, multiple contiguous parcels in Fairhope, Alabama. Nature parcel, Flying Creek, Nature Reserve, House parcel, and others. Um, and uh, we want, this was introduced at the March 21st, 2024 City Council meeting. And this is a final adoption, guys. I move for final adoption. Second. I have a 
motion and a second. second. Place one. Aye. Council President. Aye. Place three. Aye. Place four. Aye. Place five. Aye. Motion carries. All right, agenda item number seven is another final adoption to annexation of the city of Fairhope and Fairhope Single Tax Corporation contiguous properties. Um, 10-3350 County Road 48, Fairhope, Alabama. Um, and this was introduced at the March 21st, 2024 City Council meeting as well. I'll make Move a motion. To, I have a motion. Can I get a second? I'll second. I have a motion and a second per Councilman Burrell. All right. You're going to call it. Can call it, please? Place one. Aye. Council President. Aye. Place three. Aye. Place four. Aye. Place five. Aye. All right. Ordinance passes. All right. Agenda item number eight is an ordinance. Can I get someone to introduce that ordinance for me, guys? I'll introduce the ordinance. All right. So the ordinance has been introduced. I am going to ask you guys to, I'm going to suspend the rules and ask for immediate consideration on this particular ordinance. Um, if I can get a. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules for immediate consideration for this ordinance. Second. All right. I have a motion and a second. Your clerk, you'll call it. Place one. Aye. Council President. Aye. Place three. Aye. Place four. Aye. Place five. Aye. Okay. All right. No, uh, agenda item number eight is the ordinance, and the ordinance is to authorize the issuance of a city of Fairhope general obligation water and sewer warrant series 2024 in the principal amount of $25 million. Um, this is an ordinance that we spoke about. The reason that we suspended the rules because we thought it was in the best interest of our uh, business affairs as far as the money that we're getting, the interest rate that we're getting, and the money we will make on um, suspending the rules and going ahead and voting on this particular ordinance tonight. Um, if I can uh, get a motion for final adoption. A motion uh, for final uh, adoption. I'll move for final adoption. Second. second. All right, I have a motion and a second. All right. Okay. Place one. Aye. Council President. Aye. Place three. Aye. Place four. Aye. Place five. Aye. All right, motion passes. All right, very good guys. Good job. All right, agenda item number nine is a resolution. The city council approves the selection by the evaluation team for professional engineering services for our RFQ, the installation of a 16 inch force, um, uh, force sewer main with two lift stations along the state highway 181 to Kimberly Horn and associates and authorized mayor Sherry Sullivan to negotiate the not to exceed fee um, to be approved by city council. We spoke on this agenda item. This is a force main over make, on the east side, guys. And I get a motion and a second. Make, make a motion. motion. Approve the resolution. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Agenda item number 10 is a resolution to award bid number 24030 to Automated Control Services, LLC for a SCADA system for water treatment plant number one with a bid proposal not to exceed $170,110 base bid and an estimate annual cost of $10,120. Um, that would be $2,530 per day associated with the providing on-site services within 24 hours for emergency repairs. Uh, we spoke on this in depth in our work session. This is a SCADA system to collect information for our treatment plant number one. Yep. Move to award the bid. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion, guys? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Agenda item. Agenda item number 11 is a resolution to award bid number 24034, Tomorrow Water Technologies, Inc. for water treatment plant number one, finished water pump and variable frequency drive with a bid proposal not to exceed $253,945. We also spoke on this. Um, yeah, make a motion we approve the resolution. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. All right, motion carries. Agenda item number 12 is a resolution that Mary Sherry Sullivan is hereby authorized to execute a contract with Krebs Engineering for RFQ 
um, Professional Engineering Services for Water Main Repair and Replacement at U.S. Highway 98, crossing <coughs> at Fly Creek for a not to exceed cost of $48. Uh, $1,000. This has come across our desk a couple of times. We spoke about this. Um, that piping in that area needs to be repaired right there at Fly Creek. I make a motion we approve the resolution. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion about this, Council? All right, hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. The motion carries. Agenda item number 13 is a resolution to reject all bids for bid number 24032 for asphalt and concrete repairs annual contract and authorized to or the rebid the annual contract under code of Alabama 1975 section 41657D. We're just rejecting bids here, guys. I make, make a motion, a motion to here. approve the resolution rejecting all bids. I second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? You know, anytime we reject bids, it's because we don't like the cost that we have, so we'll put it back out. Uh, we could have negotiated. We only had one bid, but that was not the situation, just for further information while we're rejecting the bids. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Agenda item number 14 is a resolution. The City of Fairhope authorizes Founders Park Pavilion slash office project expansion of a new bathroom building project at Founders Park to enclose the existing mechanical room and to add off office space and open pavilion and to approve the procurement of labor only for the project from sale, what's that, sale? Seal, Seal Marine Construction for a not to exceed cost of $25,600 to approve the transfer of budget funds from the Volanta Park Bathroom Project. Uh, this was a capital project fund, which consists of $80,000 to Founders Park Pavilion slash office project. Uh, Pat spoke to us about this. We're transferring funds in a fluid document, which we call a budget, um, from one project to another that we 86'd. Um, and it's, it's just a transfer of funds for our office space and bathroom over at uh, the Girls Park, Founders Park, next to the track. You can get a motion and a second, guys. Or I'll make a motion. We approve the resolution. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on this, guys? <coughs> all right. Hearing none. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 We're, we're getting General Boone, you, you Boone, you okay? Aye. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay? Say nay. All right. Hearing none. Motion carries. All right. Very good. All right. Um, Agenda item number 15 is a resolution to award bid number 24037 to Gresco Utility Supply for a light package for Greeno Road with a bid proposal not to exceed $284,210. Um, this is um, um, our superintendent, Ben of Electric, spoke to us about this. I think this is going from Sportsman's Arena back up somewhere past 104. And we'll get all new lighting, and we got two extra poles in case of emergency situations um, because of the supply chain situation. Make a motion to approve the resolution. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I just want to point out that, you know, they are being changed out to, to LED lights, which yes. will have an immediate return on, you know, lights that, that burn quite a bit. So, yeah, it's great technology, that's for sure. All right, guys. Any other further, any other discussion? All right, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Agenda item number 16 is a resolution that the city council authorizes Mayor Sherry Sullivan to negotiate, uh oh, hold on, yeah. hold on, time out on this. Let me, uh, do you have that? I, I'll read, you want me to read it? Sure, you read it, yes all sir. Right. Uh, the amended resolution number 16, that the city council awards a contract bid number 24-027 for an outdoor mass notification system with g and Systems, LLC, sole bidder, with a total contract price of $106,250 that includes a $92,750 lump sum for materials and equipment and a $13,500 uh, agreement for a maintenance and support uh, contract. All right, Move to yes. approve the amended resolution. Second. second. I have a motion and a second to approve the amended resolution. Any further discussion on that? All right, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. All right, now, 
we will we now will vote on that particular resolution since we just amended it. Is that no, correct? I think the Clerk? way I worded it, we we accepted the amended resolution. Okay, so it's good. Okay, just want to make sure. Very good. All right, so uh, motion carries. Very good, guys. All right. Agenda item number 17 is a resolution that the city of Fairhope approves Mayor Sherry Sullivan's selection of Pyro Productions, Inc. as a professional consultant for RFQ design and production of the fireworks display for the 4th of July, 2024, pursuant to Code of Alabama Pyrotechnician Shooters Law and authorizes Mayor Sherry Sullivan to negotiate a fee schedule and establish a not to exceed limit with the firm. Okay, guys. Move to approve this election. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. All right. And this is not to exceed, so this is a budgeted item. All right. Um, any further discussion? All right. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. All right, agenda item number 18 is a resolution that the city of Fairhope approves the procurement of a startup and training for a GPL 750 standard C1D2 gas odorizer from a, what is this, L Inc. Energy as the manufacturer. The cost will not to exceed $13,350. All right, um, Wes came up to us and, and spoke about this. This is an extenuation of something that we've already passed. This is the breakdown for the actual training. It's a resolution for the actual training, guys. But this is not an additional cost. Yeah. Move to appro approve the procurement. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carries. All right, agenda item number 19 is a resolution that the city of Fairhope requests an additional $3,589,095.35 working waterfront and green space restoration project from the Alabama Gulf Coast Recovery Council to award Restore Act direct component MIP funds, which is 75% of the overrun amount. The AGCRC has approved this request and the city of Fairhope has committed to cover the remaining 25%, which is $1,186,365.11, and that the city council authorizes the mayor to sign the co-funding commitment letter on behalf of the city. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussions? This is a big deal, guys. This is money that we, we, that we got upped on for our restore at, at the pier. So this is that we're moving in the right direction. I know a lot of people are asking about that. So we're still moving in that direction. Um, any further discussion, guys? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. All right. Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Agenda item number 20 is a resolution that the city of Fairhope approves amended Number one, to the contract agreement with Watershed for RFQ professional architecture and engineering services for Nature Center building rehabilitation for a not to exceed amount of $4,400, increasing the original contract total to $52,400, and hereby authorizing Mayor Sherry Sullivan to execute the contract amendment. This is a change order in the contract with our architecture um, they're thinking that we need an architectural design for a upper level patio space and covering for our students and our constituents. Um, and we spoke about this, uh, RJ spoke, um, Richard Johnson spoke about this in our work session. Make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I just want to point out that those fees are about 3% of the estimated construction. Very reasonable, very good fees on that. Yes, yeah, so anytime we have a change order, we've got to take those seriously um, because that's a movement in our costs. So we try to make sure that those costs are um, in the best interest of our constituents and the public. All right, guys. Hearing no further discussion, all in favor say, did we have a motion in a second, guys? All right, very good. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. All right, motion carries. Agenda item number 21 is a request to grant 
uh, permission to the Boy Scouts of America Troop 47 to hold a one-time overnight camp at Flying Creek Nature Preserve as a service project. Um, I see we have our troops here now. All right, how you doing, guys? This is Troop 47. Um, let me go ahead and get a, a move to grant the request. Yeah. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussions? Um, any of you guys would like to say anything? I'll let you come up for a short period of time to say something. I know um, our uh, engineer spoke about what you guys are doing. We're excited about it. Anybody? Thank you. All right. Very good. All right. Um, I think that's a great opportunity um, for those kids to go out, and I think it's the um, uh, the catalyst of something that we will do in the future. All right? All right. Any further discussion on that, guys? All right. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. All right. Motion carries. Agenda item number 22 is a resolution that the City Council hereby approves and authorizes the City of Fairhope to execute a memorandum of understanding between the Alabama Enforcement Agency, which we call ALEA, and the City of Fairhope Police Department pursuant to Section 362149, Code of Alabama 1975. Um, Chief came to us and spoke about this. I think we've already been doing this, but now we're actually putting it in order. Um, this is to um, assist them with their aviation um, projects that we do uh, in, 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 um, in helping um, in those situations. Make a motion to approve. I have a motion. Can I get a second? I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right. Hearing none, all in favor <coughs> say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Agenda item number 23 is a resolution to authorize submission to the FEMA Homeland Security Grant Program to purchase eight uh, Gibraltar 20 feet vehicle mitigation barriers to utilize a four major intersections during events for the City of Fairhope Police Department. The total cost is $76,000. With no match required, the Alabama Law Enforcement Agency, which is ALEA, is the state administrative agency for this grant. Move to authorize their submission. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? We always like grants when there's no match. All right, very good. Thank you, Aaliyah. Um, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Agenda item number 24. This is an application for a restaurant liquor license by Douglas Kerr Dragonfly Productions, LLC, DBA Dragonfly Food Bar, 18874 Section Street, Fairhope, Alabama. Police chief told us spoke about this one, simple liquor license. I can get a motion and a second. Got a we motion. To approve the application. Second. All right. I have a motion to approve the application. I have a second. Any further discussion? All right. Hearing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. You know, these are the type of agenda items that we could do. Uh, Consent. Yeah, uh, we can group these up in the next just for future. But anyway, agenda item number 25 application for restaurant liquor license by David Holloway, Holloway Catering, LLC, DBA, Delta Groceries, 8594 U.S. Holloway 98, Fairhope, Alabama 36532. This is another liquor license. Make a motion we approve the application. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. Agenda item number 26, application for beer wine off-premise license uh, by John Matthew um, uh, Poplowski. I hope I got that right. Wawa, Alabama, LLC, DBA. Uh, Wawa, 5801, 38968, Greeno Road, Fairhope, Alabama, 36532. Guys. Make a motion. We approve the application. I have a motion. Do I get a second? Second. Anybody? Yep. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? I'm just glad to see the Wawa coming to fruition. Mm -hmm. Yep. Some people didn't think it was going to happen. <laughs> All right. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion, guys? All right. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. All right. Agenda item number 27, application for a restaurant liquor license by William. Uh, Let's hear it. Yeah. Fuzi, <laughs> Fuziuti. Fuzi, Fuzi Atu. 
whenever whoever this guy is, come and teach me how to pronounce your name. All right, Ben's Junior Barbecue LLC DBA. Ben's Junior Barbecue 552 North Section Street, Fairhope, Alabama 36532. Make a motion. We approve the application. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Besides the last name. <laughs> all right, hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion carries, guys. Thank y'all for being patient. All right. All right, hold on, sir. Hold on one second. Slow down. I got you. All right. So agenda item number 28 is, is, is a public participation. Um, you have three minutes on, this is for the pretty much like the good of the order on any topic. Um, what I am going to ask since we have um, such a congregation is that when someone comes up and they speak and they say something and you agree with it, please don't come back up and be redundant, okay? Just say amen, sister. Okay, and raise your hand, but please don't come back up again and repeat the same exact information that we've already heard because we want everybody to be able to speak and say something that we don't know. Okay, all right, that's my ask. And you have three minutes. State your name and your address <laughs> to the clerk, my man. Hello, thank you. My name is Jesse Patterson, 10630 County Road 1 in Fairhope. Um, I came here tonight to talk about the fitness court. I just want to say thank you. I didn't clap for you, but I should have. <laughs> thank you hey, for that. Better late than never, Jesse. Thank, thank you, you, brother. Thank you. <laughs> I want to say that. Um, thank you guys, all y'all, for that, Mayor. Uh, I didn't realize there was going to be such a crowd here, and I just want to just cut to the chase and uh, try to save everybody some time here. Seems like Moms for Liberty has made a bunch of calls. They've got everybody with their pitchforks out here against the library again. We've settled this multiple times in this very room. We've settled it at the library. There's a process. It's been through the process. These people are here for politics. Don't let them waste your time. That's all I got. Thank you very much. Oh, our library is fabulous. We love it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jesse. All right. All right. Rebecca Watson, Moms for Liberty. Thank you for the shout out. Uh, 124 Fig Avenue. I'm actually um, here today to make it clear that uh, we're not asking for any books to be banned. We never have and we never will. We are not asking for classic literature to be banned or removed or reshelved. There's a big lie going around where children have to be exposed to graphic sexual violence, abuse, LGBTQ ideologies and content for them to understand themselves, their family dynamics, their peers, their peers' family dynamics, the community members and the world that surrounds them. And if they're not, then they won't be inclusive, compassionate, empathetic to one another or their future populace. That is a lie. If exposing children to this content is beneficial, then why, according to the CDC, in 2016, one in six two to eight year olds are diagnosed with a mental health disorder? In 2017, rates rose 12.1% in seven to 16 year olds and 16.7% in one to nine year olds. Exposing children to concepts they're not old enough to comprehend is damaging. In 2022, 18% of 17 to 6 year olds and 22% of 17 to 24 year olds had a probable mental disorder. These children are not old enough to get a job, drive a car, see an R rated movie, or vote, but can read books in silence left to their own imagination without a par parent's consent. In my opinion, it is common sense to relocate these books. Planting ideas, targeting children blatantly with adult concepts when they cannot process or grasp any of these without coaxing. 
After reading several of these books, day after day, I suffered nightmares. They were varied from children cutting off perfectly healthy body parts, children being sexually assaulted, suffering from drug overdoses and violence. In my dream, I was not able to save them, and I have not had a restful night's sleep in six weeks. Taxpaying dollars are being used to introduce sexually and abusively charged concepts. Libraries need to watch, or yes, library members need to watch their children, but don't we also need to allow our children independence to explore books without a parent hovering? Shouldn't the library be a safe space? And what about the children that are not fortunate enough to have parents? I am not in a dream and this is reality and we can do something you fund the library you appoint the board you are responsible to relocate these books good evening i'm kim bear i live at 114 echo lane i'm a retired school teacher many years of experience in both Catholic and public school in five different states. I have taught English. I have studied young adult literature uh, at the University of Virginia. I am here as a member of Moms for Liberty. I'm also a member of the Friends of the Library. I am here because I have concerns about a book that is in the teen section of our library. It is called The Haters. It is by Jesse Andrews. And it is um, the reason I think it needs to be relocated. Oh, and by the way, I do not own a pitchfork. And I am not here asking for censorship or banning of any <coughs> book. I do think this book is inappropriate for young teens. It is written on a sixth grade reading level. It has <coughs> sexual content I believe is inappropriate. There's masturbation. There is intercourse, and there's um, how to do oral sex, all right? And I think that's inappropriate for young teens to have access to. I'm simply advocating that this book be relocated in the public library. I can read to you certain excerpts from the book, but I will bleep out all the F words if you don't mind. Wait, wait a minute, hold up. I don't need to learn how to do an oral sex. Good. Are you about to read that? I don't think anybody needs to learn how to do that. Are I, you about I, to read that? No, well, what I'm saying is we have kids I that no, right excuse now, me, so that's sir. a counterproductive <coughs> dollar really on track. But I don't no, I don't want to read it. Okay, thank you. I didn't like reading it. My husband couldn't believe I was going to read it. I don't think children should read it. Well, I, that's it. I understand your point. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. I think she's proved our point. If we were to read to y'all what you fund, that you allow our kids to read, you would have us arrested. What I read on there when I came in, we can't speak anything that's obscene. Can't, we can't use profanity. We can't say that here. But y'all have no problem with letting our babies read it. You have no problem with our children being taught at 8, 9, 10 years old how to perform oral sex how to have boy-on-boy -boy sex, girl-on-girl -girl sex, boy-on-girl -girl sex, how to masturbate, and vibrators. It is absolutely ridiculous what this has... I, I know y'all don't like to be here. Trust me, I didn't believe at 48 years old I would be coming and begging a city council to quit spending taxpayer money to fund the destruction of innocence in our children. Explain that to me. Yeah. We... So, uh, also, it does explain the police presence outside because if we read this, if we read it, you'll have us arrested. Or will you agree for just tonight, just this once, for us to read the books to you that is allowed for 12 year old children and under? Will you allow that just tonight? Will you allow us to read the books? I didn't think so. Are you going to let us? Will you let us read the books? Well, I guess you know what's in the books because you've had almost a year to look at it and you don't have a problem with it. So let me tell you, there are no fence riders anymore. You're either on the side of the kids or you are on the side of the child predators. There's no fence riding. None. It's gone. 
We have the other side that's going to tell you we are about banning books. No, sir. We are about reshelving them, relocating them in an adult section where a parent, not you, not the governor, not the mayor, but the parent has the right to decide what their child uses. Is that so wrong? What is wrong with y'all moving the books to an adult section? So I don't have to explain to my, my 10 year old grandson's gonna be reading tonight. Well, he was, but he can't read his part because I don't know, we all have him arrested or me. Will you have me arrested? Will you have him arrested? So I'm asking you tonight, will you let us read? It's a, just a yes or no, yes or no. Can we read what y'all are using the taxpayer money to fund the destruction of our children's mind? Can we read it? I guess we can't. So or can we read it? Can we say fuck, dick, pussy? I just need to know. Can we say it? Because it's in the books. Well, you just did it, ma'am. So okay. go ahead. If you want to continue, you made your point. So you, you, you got your point across. You, got, you want to curse in public. You want to do all these things. I got you. So, so okay. Your time is up, ma'am. Your, your time is up. Your time is up. Thank you. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Why would you, I mean, if you're so, this is a, con, listen, you can't, hold on, time out. If you're saying what you believe in is true and we have a baby in here, then I don't think that's productive. No, the taxpayers on, on, are going to see what y'all let go on. sit down or I'm asking you to leave. All right, you're I, out of order. Or, okay. You're out of order. I'm asking okay. you to leave. Sit down, please. All right, so if we know we have kids in here, then what point is it to do those things, something that you're against in front of the presence of a baby? That makes no sense. So, no, 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 no. If you got any rationale, what I just said, there should be no more comments. None. All right? Come on, baby. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because you're going to prove your, you're going to, I mean, it makes no sense. No, but Ghana is too, come on. Okay, Don't I'm try to defend say, that. I'm his mom. I've had him cover his ears for everything uh, I believe is I'm inappropriate. Not, come on, ma'am. I was here to help him. Come on, ma'am. And he's going to also bleep out what is not appropriate. Well, you going to have him read the material? <laughs> okay. 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 That's your decision. That's your decision. As a parent. That's your decision. You're a parent. As a parent, I, I believe, that's I'm your allowing decision. him to read this. This is the whole point right here. Very good. Thank you. Go he's ahead. Your, that's your decision. Go ahead. Y'all look good. Bite my lip, feeling a, like a cornered animal. Gab's eyes widen. Oh, God, did you... There's a curse word that starts with an F. Him. She winces. I don't mean it like that. It's just boys will say anything to get some... Curse word that starts with an A. Yep, got that. Curse word that starts with a B. Guess he beat some level or something. The scene changes, a man with a fro in the dank, messy bedroom with a half-dressed girl. She gives him head. They're on the bed having SEX, all controlled by the quarry while the fro guy narrates. I will never understand the phrase meaningless Okay, SEX. kid, that's good, baby. We, you're good. You can take that down. Sit down. Sit down, baby. Sit down, baby. You're good. No, You're good. Sit down. Let him out. Yeah. Thank you. Y'all. Y'all. Yeah, yeah. Something's. Y'all. You know. Yeah. Something's wrong when that's in the library, isn't it? So uh, I do agree. You're, you're, you're making no sense, ma'am, and I and I don't. I, yeah. You're making no sense. Anyway, who's up next? Who's coming up to speak? I'm happy to go. Yeah. Thank you, man. It's good to see you all again. Hey, buddy. How God you bless doing? you. I My name is Doug Greengard. I live at 311 Wakefield Avenue. I find it absolutely abhorrent and unthinkable that you would think, even for a half a second, that it's wrong for someone to read those words. <laughs> but that's exactly what kids are doing in the library. But when a kid stands here and reads what they have full access to in the library, it troubles you and you can't figure it out. I don't understand that thinking. I think that any person with one half grain of salt 
of any kind of moral fiber would say to themselves, this does not belong accessible for children who are as young as seven years old. And yet, we have a city council elected by us as taxpayers who will not utter a single word nor take a stance against immorality. How can you sit there and allow this garbage? And there are literally a hundred books that are so graphic in detail that are available to young children that make transitioning from a boy to a girl and girl to a boy, among other things, sound like they drop their snow cone at the little ice cream place, that it's just there's no pain or no ramifications to it whatsoever. And yet, we have a city council that sits back, funds a, a library, and does absolutely nothing. Won't say a word. Are you good with it? I know you won't answer, but by not saying anything, you know what that means at a wedding? That means you approve of the wedding. So I'm just going to step that's your back opinion. and no, 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 it's that's not. Your not at a wedding, it's not my opinion. That's when a person opinion. doesn't say they object to what's going on, they approve of it. In your opinion. And you approve of what's going on. I'm convinced of it. You know why? Because facts and the truth speaks. And right now, by not speaking, you're telling a lot of truth. All I have to say is this city council could do something about this. Other city councils are. Other mayors are. Other places are moving books to places where children as young as seven who should never have to put their eyes on material like this, they're doing something about it. But for some reason, this city council does nothing. Doesn't say a word <laughs> in all the wrong things. flabbergasting. It's unbelievable. And you know another thing too, I think a person who registers as a Republican should vote as a Republican. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hey, Cor Corey, can I, can I say something uh, briefly? Say, yeah, uh, one moment. Sir. Can I, can uh, I just Dr. say Robinson. something? And, and, and guys, I appreciate everybody that comes to speak. I think everybody has an opinion that's and has a right to be heard on these issues. But, but please, let's state facts and facts alone. Please. To say that this council has never said a word about it. Sir, I know, I know you know that's not true because you were here when I said it. I specifically said that, that we do not, as a council, condone any inappropriate material being given or... Uh, hold on, hold on, I'll let you speak. Now, hey, you on, let me speak. Out. If he's if someone's spoken, we're going to have respect, okay? Now, this is the second time. In a minute, I'm going to ask them to remove you if you keep on. I believe it is incredibly inappropriate for children to be giving material that is inappropriate for their age. And I would never let my child read the kind of material, my children that are young, read the kind of material that was just read to us out loud. It made me sick to my stomach to listen to that poor child being used to read those terrible words for someone his age. And it's my right, and it's, hold on, it's my right and it's my job as a parent to protect them from the material that I consider inappropriate for them. It is not the government's job to do that for you. Now, hold on. Don't, don't, don't clap yet. I also believe that that material should not be in areas where children young enough that should not be exposed can get their hands on it. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the question though, are those books in our library in an area that, that's, that's what, hold on, let me, hold on, hold on, hold on. The question is, are those books in our library in an area where, from what I read, the lady gave me a statistics from one to nine year olds. One year olds can't read, but from anybody that's in a reading place that can get their hands on. That's the question. From what I understand, that's not the case. Oh, no. 
<clears throat> yeah, I've, I've asked this question before, and I, and I may have asked it of you, sir, I believe, is we have ratings for movies, okay? And there are, I've been told there are certain agencies that rate books. Now, I don't know if there's a consensus on what those ratings are, but I believe there is a way to justify this if these, if these recognized rating agencies say a book is inappropriate for children under a certain age, those books should be in an area for children that age. Seems pretty simple. It's not hard. They're in the teen sections. From what I, when, I went and did, when I went by the library and I did my own due diligence, and these particular books are not in the book area for children. They're in a the book area for teenagers. Uh, well, what I'm saying is, what we, what, no, but ma'am, you're mixing, you're, you're telling me that these books are in there from kids at, as young as sixth, second grade, and that's not the truth. Okay, go ahead, guys. Go ahead, my friend. Uh, Alan Hammock, 313 Blackfriar Street. When any government or church, for that matter, undertakes to say to its subjects, this you may not read, this you must not know, the end result is tyranny and oppression no matter how holy the motives. Robert Heinlein, Revolt in 2100. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Good to see you, Ms. Wilson. I'm <coughs> Charles Wilson, 489 Bartlett Avenue, Fairhope. Good to see you. I mentioned the last time I was with you, one of my favorite presidents, General Eisenhower, was concerned about our friends over in Russia. I'm going to read you two or three statements that are their goals. One, get control of the schools, use them as transmission belts for communism propaganda. Use the curriculum. Get control of teachers' association. That's goal number 17. Goal number 25, break down cultural standards of morality for promoting pornography, obscenity in books, magazines, motion pictures, radio, and TV. Goal number 28, eliminate prayers or any aspect of religious expression in the schools. <clears throat> Goal number 40, listen closely. Discredit the nuclear family as an institution. Goal number 41, emphasize the need to raise children away from the negative influence of parents. Parents have a right, and you're right. Parents ought to know what the children are reading, but they all not have to stand guard in the library to say, son, you can't pick that book up. Son, you can't pick that book up. They ought not be available. In my lifetime, I never thought those four goals would be being achieved. I, like a bunch of folks here, some of you, spent a little while in the military defending the right, freedom of free speech, freedom of the press, Second Amendment, all, all of those. But folks, Common sense says there's a right way of doing things, and our library board does not agree with what you just said, Jay, that those books ought not be available, because they are available, and I challenge any one of you to say that they're not. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for your time. My name is Nicole Kramer. I have two children. Um, I don't believe in banning books. I believe in the First Amendment. I own three businesses here. And I do want to tell you, we have vacationed here for over 25 years since I was about 17 years old, because all my family's from here. But I outran this in San Diego, California. I purposely picked Fairhope, Alabama to raise my children in. I relocated, sold everything, and moved here specifically for what we were dealing with out there. You guys have no clue where this leads. I don't want to ban a book. I'm not, everybody has a right to read. But let me just read you, because there's no, there's no cuss words. 
She grabs me by the hair and drags me across the room. She flings me onto the bed next to an old man, and then he is on top of me, holding me down with the strength of 10 men. He kisses me with lips that are slack and wet and taste of onions. He digs his teeth into my lower lip underneath the weight of him. I cannot see, move, or breathe. He fumbles with his pants, forces my legs apart, and I can feel him pushing himself between my thighs. I gasp for air and kick and squirm. He thrusts his tongue into my mouth. I bite down with all my might. He is squeezing my breast with his hand, like someone shopping for a melon. I try to push him away, but my arm, stone heavy from, doesn't move. I open my eyes, watch him squeeze my other breast. He unbuckles his belt. I could go on, but what grade level do you think this is? Because I have a fourth grader and a kindergartner who are in a private school here in Fairhope. You think that's maybe, let's say 12. Let's say maybe 15, 18, because God knows our kids are having sex at that age. No, it's for a fifth grader. A fifth grader with an AR accelerated reading level. Does that sound appropriate? No. Okay, I'm all for Huckleberry Finn, To Kill a Mockingbird, the classics. I think they have excellent value of lessons, lessons learned in life. I don't want to ban anything. I want to know that when I take my kid to Fairhope Library, he can go in and he can pick out books of his choices. Because you know what? I've encouraged him to be a reader, to explore the world, to use his imagination, to gather as much information to be a productive member of society. That's all we're asking for. Relocate them. But look at this. The summary of it says, like if you pull it up online on Fairhope's website, the contents are sexual activities including rape of a minor, prostitution, explicit violence. The summary is a young girl is sold into sex slavery trade to pay off her family's debt. What child needs to know that their family has debt to be paid and needs to be sold into sex trafficking? Are you freaking kidding me? Again. Carol Wilson, 489 Bartlett Avenue, Fairhope, Alabama. I was the citizen that challenged that book at Fairhope Public Library. A reconsideration request was filed, and the library director uh, denied the request to keep the book in the place of where it was shelved at Fairhope Public Library. I asked for an appeal before the Library Board of Trustees. I attended that meeting and the Library Board of Trustees voted unanimously to uphold the decisions of the director. I'd like to bring to your attention another book called Boy Toy. The re reading level is fourth grade. Welcome to National Library Week. This is a New York Times book review. This novel takes one, or one of the more uncomfortable themes of young adult literature. Young adult in the mind's eye of the publishers is ages 12 through 18. Here in Alabama, that is considered a minor. A sexual relationship between an adult and a minor, and it pushes it past the genre's furthest boundaries. This is an upsetting, intense, intricately drawn portrait of the fallout from a 12-year-old boy's involvement, his sexual involvement with his seventh grade teacher. The story is about a boy named Josh, and he grew up and he was nearly convinced himself that he bore the responsibility for an affair with his 30-year-old teacher rather than the other way around. The book review continues, sexual transgressions come in all forms in young adult literature, again, keyed towards ages 12 through 18. In a culture so saturated with sex, what are teenagers to make of this kind of book? What the author gives is only a glimpse of the collateral damage caused by child abuse. With this being Child Abuse Awareness Month, 
I ask for this city council, I petition you to take action and direct your library board to relocate books of this nature and any other nature that contains sexually explicit materials, graphic materials, pornography, and obscene materials according to community standards. Thank you. Uh, my name is Alicia Wall. I live at 103 Parsh Circle in Quail Creek, new to Fairhope, relatively new. Um, I'm a teacher here in Baldwin County. Um, we don't have any business banning books. Books should be available for everyone. If you don't want children to read books, don't let your children, you are a parent. The bigger point that we have totally missed is this. <laughs> Thank you. Every yeah. child I know from third grade up owns this. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you're so blankety blank worried about pornography, mm. about anything, take this away. Yes. Secondly, I teach first grade. They ain't reading. They aren't at the library. They're at home on a tablet. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, uh, President and council. Uh, my name is Renee Wilkins um, and I live at 35474 Highway 225 in Spanish Fort. Um, I have spent nine of my years uh, as a teacher here at the high school in Fairhope, uh, nine very special years. Um, also over 25 in a church here in Fairhope, so not a resident, but I feel like I am a part of Fairhope. Uh, have spent many summers with grandkids at the library. That is our place to be. Um, so I am not talking about, um, because I did not want to read those things, I'm not talking about the teenagers, although I also uh, volunteer with Women's Care Medical Center in your schools, uh, seventh and eighth grade, and we do talk about things that um, are inappropriate, and we do um, uh, ask them to make the decisions. But I'm talking about the kindergartner that this lady was talking about that doesn't have a phone, uh, the first grader and the second grader, because there are many books that I have seen in the Fairhope Library, and also my Spanish Fort Library, and I have gone before the library board there as well, that are about gender identity. Uh, and I'm thinking that whenever the gentleman got up at the very beginning of the program, he prayed to our only one true God and asked for wisdom. And that's what I'm asking for too, is for wisdom, because he has entrusted us to um, all of us, not just me, not just a council, not a library board. He's entrusted all of us to make sure that as stewards, that we stewardship our, uh, the welfare, well-being, age-appropriate guidance, uh, the child's best interests because they're in our care. I read a book uh, called Children Are Wet Cement. Your handprint is on their heart because they trust you. Uh, this particular book is Jack not Jackie, right there where a five-year-old can pick it up. Can they read it? No. A, uh, an adult has to read it to them. Is it about something that is age appropriate? No, it is not age appropriate to decide that if a child is born as a little girl, which the, the story was that the older sibling was so excited as a little girl, and this child has decided he's gonna be a little boy, and how upsetting it was to the older child until finally she realized, well, he still has the nice brown eyes that I really loved. Uh, it's an adult book. In the back, there's even a page for adults and references that you can read more about this particular topic. Uh, I also have run into a book called Mr. Watson's Chickens. I was reading it to my grandson by mistake, did not know, thumbed through it, saw chickens. He liked chickens. At the end of the book, I'm re I've read a book about two homosexual men and they're sharing a bed together right there within his reach, anybody's reach in that age. This should not be, this is not good stewardship. These should be moved, not banned, as this lady said, no banning of books, just moved to another place where the parent does have the ability to choose for their child. Yeah. I, I, yeah. So, yeah. I agree with that. Hello, my name is Debbie Greengard. I live at 311 Wakefield Avenue. 
um, like the lady that just spoke. I also have a juvenile book that talks about transgenderism. Um, and this section, one section says, see, when you were born, you couldn't tell people who you were or how you felt. They looked at you and made a guess. Maybe they got it right, maybe they got it wrong. Right there, they're, they're taking away authority from the parent and the guardian, already planting that seed. I'm not even gonna read the rest in this because it's basically teaching this child about transgenderism, how you can be a cisgender, transgender, uh, pronouns, which is totally inappropriate for a child who does not understand this, for a child who one day wants to be an astronaut, the next day wants to be a superhero, but yet they're saying you can change your identity day by day. So here's some stats. According to, since this is national child abuse, we're, we're, we're recognizing that. According to the National Sexual Violence Research Center, one in four girls and one in six boys will be sexually abused before they turn 18 years old. The Guardian has an article that's titled, Children are now the biggest predators against children. They state that this problem has been exacerbated by the accessibility of pornography to children. The NIH says, according to the World Health Organization, approximately 150 million girls and 73 million children under the age of 18 years have been victims of violence and sexual exploitation during their childhood. Victims are usually afraid to ask for help or support from parents, leading to lifelong mental health issues, including behavior and abuse problems. The NIH also says, that violence against children in schools, which is a common space of occurrence, is a public health problem of worldwide scope. Psychology Today states that only parents or guardians should be the ones to discuss sex and relationships with their children, as they are the most trusted source. <laughs> UNICEF. <laughs> UNICEF says when children are shown pornographic content, they come to view this as normal and acceptable. The Washington Post said that education department reports of sexual violence in schools has risen over 50% from grade to grade, year to year, school year to school year. So I ask you, do you really think this type of information, these type of books, this type of filth should be given to our children who cannot understand these concepts at these kind of ages? Thank you. My name is Melissa Gates. I'm from, I live at 1280 Rigby Road, Mobile, Alabama. We're also dealing with this kind of issue over there. Moms of Liberty, I'm coming to support them as well. Um, the name of my book is Doing It. Let's talk about sex. Starting with age 12. Y'all, we're not talking about book banning. We're talking about moving them, moving them over in a section that they just can't readily. Look, I had a son, he was the class clown. I'm telling you, he would definitely go for this book when he was 12 years old, and I wouldn't want him to do that. The library should be a safe place. It should, I shouldn't have to worry whether my son could get to that book or not. He's the class clown, he would think it's funny. And I'm the one chasing him down saying, no, you can't have that. But you shouldn't have to do that. And I know it's not the government. I don't want the government. Lord have mercy, I don't want the government raising my child. And that's not what this is about. It's about a safe place for them to go. Luckily, he's 28 and he's a productive, responsible person. <laughs> but there was question there for a while. Um, so I slept with someone whose birthday was February 14th. And he had a birthmark and the shape of a heart on his penis for a 12-year-old. What about sexting? Can you watch porn? It's important to remember just because a relationship's monogamous, which means exclusive, that doesn't mean that it's not healthy. Mm, what if I come early? Sex isn't an endurance test like you see in some porn. Also, it's quite likely that you will have A penis, the first time you have sex, you will ejaculate quickly, and that's fine. If you're embarrassed, don't worry about it. What if I don't come at all? Don't worry about it. Sex can hurt, but 
by no means does your first time have to be painful. If you're relaxed and aroused, your vagina will produce its own lubrication. It prevents any friction, but there's also no shame in using some extra lube from a bottle. 12-year-old. 12-year-old. Can I ask you a question? Is that in the Ferret Library? Yes, I'm sorry, it is. Do, do you know where it's located at the Ferret Library? Teens, yeah. It, she, Wendy, researched it. Oh, have, and, and ma'am, have you been there and seen that in our library? I have not. No, okay. she I, looked I just, it up. I just, I just wanted to check. Yeah. I, I actually have. I went and checked to make sure that they were all in there, so that nobody was coming here with books that weren't, weren't in, there. in there. I wanted to make sure that we were all. And we do have legit shit. shots to make sure that we could back up these books. We, we did our homework. They did. So, so in the teen section, just for clarification, the books. Are picked by the teenager they still have to have a signature from the parent to receive or retrieve that book from my understanding is that not correct? i don't think no. that no that's not no. no is there anybody from the library to get a library card, to get a library card. Yeah. No. they just have to have the card and i have that recorded on you might need the you might need that to get a library card but once yeah. you have the library card you don't even have to go to the library to check it out you can go to the to any a kiosk that they have available and just check it out. Nobody even knows what you're checking out, if that makes sense. Go ahead, man. Hi, uh, my name is Sarah Bogdanovich. I am a licensed clinical social worker here in town. Um, I live at 618 Belangi, um, just around the corner, and have for quite a while. I was not planning to speak tonight, but one of the things I'm noticing is um, a real lack of expertise in the area of child development and sexual awareness. Um, I actually work, um, I'm one of the few um, therapists that treat problematic sexual behavior in minors, which is uh, when minors are perpetrating sexual, um, uh, inappropriate sexual behavior on even younger children. Um, they are often uh, the victims of sexual um, abuse themselves. I can tell you after having been a therapist for quite a while and raising teens and doing therapy of various sorts, um, at no time has anyone that I've ever worked with said that they got the idea for this, um, came up with an idea for this from anything that they read or saw even on the screen. Um, it surprised me actually to the point where I really did a lot more uh, work and I do want you to know that I'm um, trained. Um, I have a license to treat problematic sexual behavior. Um, at no time has any child told me that they were suggested um, any information that made them become gay, that made them feel they were trans, that made them feel that um, they didn't understand something, they read it in a book and so they started doing it. Um, that doesn't mean this isn't troubling. I mean I have teen boys Right? I mean, I don't think anybody's more worried about <laughs> sexual behavior than someone who's trying to parent teen boys. And I recognize that a lot of these parents are very concerned. There's nothing more humbling and terrifying than being a parent. However, what I know from research, what I know from my experience is the very best thing you can do is continue to have an open communication with your child about, sexual, about sexuality, to acknowledge their sexuality developmentally appropriately and not where you'd like it to be but where it actually is likely to be which we know from research is usually three to four years younger you parents think their children are about three to four years behind where they actually are sexually they're curious they don't need a book to be curious any of us who've gone through puberty know that we are sexual beings and it, though it's troubling to see this in the library I also know that my children will be exposed to lots of things that I'm going to have to explain, that I'm going to have to pass judgment on and, and talk about what our values are as a family. And these are not going to scar them for life. They're going to bring up questions. Um, so I'm glad that they're in the library. Again, I'm, I'm going to take my kid bringing one home as a, as a sign that I need to talk about something with them. Um, but I do appreciate the fact that um, this group continuously wastes your time because this is not your job. Thank you. Um, 
Hello, Brian Dassinger. I've been an attorney here for 20 years and lived here for 20 years. Is it okay if I hand y'all something? No. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, what I've just handed y'all is a um, Baldwin County conservative resolution. Um, this is signed by Faith Family Freedom Coalition of Baldwin County, Faith Family Freedom Coalition of Mobile County, the Baldwin County Common Sense Campaign, Eagle Forum of Baldwin County, and Moms for Liberty Baldwin County. It is very similar to what has been passed in Prattville, several other cities in the state of Alabama, and right here in Baldwin County in the cities of Foley and recently in the cities of Orange Beach. Um, it's basically we have come here several times. We have followed your procedures. Um, we've gone to the library board. We followed their procedures. We have uh, made complaints about the books, and each time we've been completely dismissed. Uh, we came here before. Jay, you told us that the city council did not fund this, the library. We found that that is untrue. The city council does fund the library, and we've also uh, discovered that Mayor Sullivan appoints the library board. Y'all do have the authority to do something about this. This issue obviously is not going to go away. We have read some of the books here today. It sounds like there's some confusion with the city council in what is housed where in the, in the library. Um, it sounds like actually this, this um, agenda or this topic needs to be put on the agenda and actually voted on by the city council. It's, it's not time to continue to sit on the fence that's all we've gotten is sitting on the fence and passing the buck. It is time to stand up and take a vote and let everybody know where you stand. My name is Elizabeth Williams, 702 Greenwood Avenue. I am a mother of a beautiful six-year-old boy. I'm also a degreed librarian. Because my greatest passion in life is connecting people with information, I spent years of my life in a graduate program devoted solely to the study of information. I say this not to brag, but emphasize the time and devotion it takes to become a librarian. It's a profession with specialized expertise and minimum education requirements in line with nurse practitioners, engineers, counselors, lawyers, which I know some of y'all are, and other professionals. I ask library supporters, oh, I love my. I love my prop. Um, let's pretend I have a book. I asked library supporters to wear yellow stickers today um, so you can see them, but I also asked them to bring a band or challenge book to hold up and show their support. Well, imagine I have a book because I love my prop. Here's my book, and it hasn't been banned, but it's certainly been challenged tonight. It's my collection development textbook from library school, and it's thick. Maybe somebody can bring it. Uh, all accredited library master's programs have to include a course in collection development, and all librarians have completed a course of study. Librarians are professionals. We take the books in our collection very seriously, and we take very seriously our commitment to ensuring our collections reflect the needs of the communities they serve and the diversity of the communities they serve, of all patrons, all families, not just few, not just a vocal minority who spread lies and stoke fears in the name of protecting children, which we have seen they are not doing tonight. We have countered, I, I, y'all, I ran out of space trying to type up all the lies. It's, it's amazing. I'll write you guys a brief afterwards. I got your emails. We countered some of those falsehoods tonight. Um, there is no porn in the children's section. I repeat, there is no porn in the children's section. There may be some sex ed content in the juvenile section. There may be some LGBTQ affirming content for families and parents who want that content to help their children make sense of the world they live in, um, not hide from it. There are a couple books in the teen section with mature content, as we've seen, but the teen section is for age 13 and up, and that's a totally, nope, 13, 
totally different section. No child under 12 is allowed in the library. I'm sorry, if y'all find it, I'll, I'll stand corrected. I got pictures today. Okay, okay, fine, sure, sure. But no child under 12 is allowed in the library without a parent or guardian. Nothing in the library meets the definition of obscenity. Y'all know the Miller test. I'm not even gonna bother you with it. Everything's appropriately shelved. These are award-winning books from reputable publishers. Um, and most of them are cautionary tales, warning against the real dangers teens face like drugs exploitation, rape, violence. These folks would know that if they actually bother to read the books they want to restrict. Um, we've seen extreme groups like this do what they do to a community, especially when allowed to gain control of the library board like they did in Prattville. It's, the library is barely operational and that community is hurting. It's torn apart. Luckily in Fairhope, we have y'all, you're experienced, you're qualified, you're thoughtful and knowledgeable, and you trust your library board. Thank you for your continued support of our board, our library, and our wonderful library professionals. Hello, my name is Celia Waters. I live at 308 South T Drive. I am here as representing the Heritage Foundation as Heritage Action for America. I'm here as a board member of Common Sense Campaign. I was given something for a book to read, and it fits all the other things they're talking about. Um, I also work at my church on staff. I'm offended by some of this stuff, okay? Um, the other thing is, I, it, it, I am so upset about our country, and this replicates part of the ups, uh, what I'm upset about. You know, we, 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 we wor worry about our country being taken apart, being attacked, but by the outside, we're worried about somebody from another country coming in, like Hamas came into Israel or the Russians came into Ukraine. But that's not what I'm finding out. I have to be more afraid of. I have to be afraid of a Secretary of Homeland Defense who took a oath of office to protect our borders. And yet he goes to Congress and lies about it. I'm afraid of a president you know, who's supposed to make sure the borders are secure. That's his number one job. And he's telling, oh, everything's fine. It's not fine. We have people, we have Chinese, military-aged Chinese men who are all clothed the same, about the same height, looking like an army. And we've had 2 million, no, 800,000 of them come in across the border. Oh, report in 12 years, and we'll talk to you about it. And the rule of law says that if you don't come in through a port of entry, you can't claim that you're here because you're afraid of something going on. You know, you're under attack in another country. And they still let them go. And now we come to you. Now let's bring this down to here because we all know that the strongest government is that which is closest to you. And it's y'all. And one thing I've noticed about, you're asking a lot of questions about where are these books located? Is it here? Is it there? How about if you take a work session and go over there and find out yourself? <laughs> just, a, just, just a little field trip, okay? And I think we can submit the books for which we are concerned. So to save y'all some time. And we can also, we also have the, um, sections marked from about what we're concerned and the, and the thing tells you what age limit the concerns of the book like mine reading age grade age reading age uh fourth grade they don't want me to read this okay it doesn't even have bad words in it as far as you know obscene or f words or it's not that much it doesn't need it okay but may I, and, and thank you for looking at me when I'm talking to you, because most of the time you don't. Please take a little field trip over there and find out for yourself. And I'd like a report back. Yeah. So we have taken a field trip over there, man, just to put it on record. We have been over there. Yes. So, so thank many you. people are so asking we, questions. Well, we're asking questions so the public would understand it so we can get an answer what you guys think, because the facts are kind of skewed right well, now. So if you would so put out a report, that would break. Yes, ma'am. All right, go ahead, my love. Uh, 
Hi, my name is Sayla Robbins, and I live on 59 Fells Avenue. Um, this perspective is limited only to uh, the availability of books at a library, and I hope that everyone listens to my personal perspective and why I have the opinions that I do. Um, I think that it's the job of a parent to curate uh, the consumption of media, not the society or government, because not everyone has the same needs or contemporary community values as you and your child. Not everyone has the same opinion on what is or isn't appropriate, both for their child and for themselves. And I understand why some of these excerpts disturb you. I was also disturbed. Um, however, there are other solutions that could be imposed, such as different ways of organizing books or uh, having warnings of their content, but not making them unavailable to teenagers. Um, I don't think they are imposed merely by being available at the library. Um, additionally, I also want to clarify that grade level ratings are a measurement of the complexity of the language and the vocabulary and of the comprehension ability. It's not necessarily the uh, audience. Sex is a fundamental tenet of emotional uh, and sexual development, like the understanding of it. The age at which someone is mentally ready to understand and explore information around it is not the same for everyone. Um, ignorance of topics related to sex correlates with higher STDs and pregnancies. It does not necessarily encourage or cause deviant sexual behavior. Additionally, um, it was important for me to read about some of the things that would have been objectionable. Um, uh, my mom died when I was nine, and I didn't have someone to comfortably talk to about the natural feelings and physical changes I experienced in puberty. And I also want to address one of the comments about the mental health statistics. Um, there are other factors, such as the opioid epidemic, which is how my mom died, and that contributes to my mental health problems. Not any of the information I've ever read. You know, I'm very passionate about sexual health and bodily integrity, and I often read information at the library related to those things. And if those were not available to me, I wouldn't be able to pursue that information. Um, I don't think that that should be decided for me. Um, one second. That's, that's it. Thank you. Sir, My name is David Guestpass. I, <clears throat> I live at 40 Echo Lane. Uh, I just want to make a couple of points. One is quite clear to me that most of the people who are pleading with you to move the books um, disapprove of homosexuality, don't believe that there are transsexuals in the world, think that uh, people are born the way they are and, and by good parental training they'll stay that way. That's just not true. Uh, and even if it were, the question here is not what the uh, availability of these books for huge numbers of kids or young adults who want to read them. These books, and, and I would point out that one could take a section of the book without looking at the whole content. These books, by and large, are there for kids, young adults, who have had problems so they can see that they are not alone, so they can see how to deal with them. It's not like masses of young kids are taking these books out. But for those few, even if it's one, who takes a book out and realizes that they have something in common with the, and are and are not by themselves, even if it's one per ch young person that does that, and that person gets some help, is gets some sa salvation, then it is worth keeping them where they are so that person can get it. Thank you.
Hi. Uh, I spoke to you all once before uh, on a... Tell us your name and your address. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Ryan Hamby, 19849 Buds Lane, Fairhope, Alabama. I spoke to you all once before about something that was not uh, ridiculous in my mind. Uh, I appreciate you all and your work and uh, on the city's problems. Uh, I don't really think that these are city problems. I believe that uh, I'm here to support the library board. I'm here to support y'all on the, on the city council. I'm here to support the mayor. I'm here to support the employees of the Fairhope Library. Um, they're all professionals. They're all highly trained. The library board is a highly competent organization. We have one of the finest libraries I've ever seen. Um, my daughter has volunteered there. My wife has volunteered there. I have volunteered there. Um, I have no doubt that the material is appropriate at the levels that they are. I don't have to go look at it. I can believe it. I don't need people coming from outside of Fairhope with uh, mimeo mimeograph sheets handed to them by some organization that has some kind of an agenda that is foreign to me. Uh, and it doesn't have anything to do with my community. I was called by uh, friends that said that this stuff keeps going on and keeps wasting our city's time. I wish you all would deal with the traffic issues, our development issues, our uh, sewage and uh, water issues, this waste of time on uh, our city dime is really upsetting to me. This is not what we need to be dealing with. We have structures. We have traditions. We have history. We have education. We have competent bureaucrats. We have competent civil service. I appreciate all y'all's service. I appreciate the service of the library board. I appreciate the service of the employees of the library. And I really, really appreciate this city. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Brent Shaw and I live at 19721 Hunter's Loop here in Fairhope. I also am one of the pastors at First Baptist Church here in town and I do appreciate you as well. appreciate the work. I know this is a hard job. Uh, being a pastor is a hard job, so I can relate. But in recent uh, statement issued by the Alabama Library Association in response to a house bill dealing with these types of books in our libraries, they said, and I'm quoting, a vast majority of parents trust their libraries. Nonpartisan research shows that 71% say a major reason libraries are important is that libraries are a safe place for children. And I would wholeheartedly agree with that. Libraries should be a safe place for our children. But I'm highly disappointed that our library would allow such sexually explicit books to be present in children and teen sections and uh, promoting extensive sexual behavior and also promoting the exploration of alternative lifestyles to be in the children and teen sections of our library. I'm also disappointed that you guys have not yet acted on something which you can act upon. I know you can. And so, I'm also a little bit disgusted that folks who would never use such language in their daily life have felt compelled to take such unusual steps because uh, it is a serious issue. It is something that's important to many people. As a, one who represents nearly 2,000 members in its community, I can tell you it's important to them. And so if reading out language that would break the city's codes for profanity and obscenity makes us feel a little bit uncomfortable, well, so be it. It should make us feel uncomfortable because why would we allow that to be in our kids' section as well? So it's not book banning. I've heard that tonight. It's not censorship. It's simply doing what we already do at many levels in our society, and that basically is to protect minors who are not yet mature enough to make potentially life-changing decisions by placing age-appropriate boundaries on them. We do that every day, and we could list a long line of those. There's a brief excerpt from a book called Sex is a Funny Word that I'd like to read to you. It's an example of a book in the children's section promoting lies about gender that can cause confusion. Having a penis isn't what makes you a boy. Having a vulva isn't what makes you a girl. The truth is much more interesting than that. There are more than two kinds of bodies, but they call the baby a boy or a girl based on what they see. That might sound like the end of the story, but it's really just the beginning. When you're born, a doctor or midwife calls us boy or girl based on what we look like on the outside. And I could go on, 
that's implicitly a lie. That is not true. It's a biological, scientific fact that we're either male or we're female. Not true. Nope. And so, at times, at times, we are called on to speak the truth in love and to shine light in dark places for the good of our children, even when it's uncomfortable. And I know this is one of those times for many of us. So, uh, in closing, I want to implore you to act because I know that you are good folks. I do believe that about you. And I do believe you care about our kids. I know that. I also encourage you to do so because each of you are elected officials. And what you do or don't do will be remembered in the next election, just to be honest. And finally, if that's still not incentive enough to act, then I want to remind you that one day, I will, we all will stand before God. I'm almost hey, finished. Come on, guys. Hey, come on. We will all stand hey. before God one day and give an account for the things we have done or have not done and also the thank good you, we you. could have done. Thank so you. I implore you to do that. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Lorraine Sewell. I live at um, uh, 13974 State Highway 181. I appreciate the that the library is not there to represent my personal values. I really do. It's not there for that. And if I have personal values about my religious beliefs, whether they be Muslim, Jewish, or Christian, and I, that bothers me that my kids are exposed to certain things, I will send them to a private school that, that, that provides those values. If I have a problem with what's in a government public institution that is different than what I teach my kids, then I have a right to keep them out of that. And we, we talk about child abuse. How much child abuse happens in people's own homes? I mean, really, we're, we're, th there's all this energy around protecting children from abuse at the library. My God, there's so much we could be doing with foster kids in this area. Okay. There's so much energy that could be happening. And you look at so many people are abused who have no voice because it's their uncle, their father, their friend's parent. And where do they go when they're 5, 6, 10, 15 to talk about that? And so I'm not saying the library's the answer, but you, you, we act like these kids aren't exposed to things. They are exposed to incredible things out there. So again, I don't want the library to represent my personal values, and I don't want the public school to do that. That's my job to monitor that. I want my public schools and my public libraries to be representative of options that our entire community needs. And I think as a parent, if you don't like it, if we want to set up a government control, then set up a situation where a parent can say to the library, my child's not allowed in that library. And the library has a way to say, your ID doesn't match, you can't come in because your mama said no. Okay. I think that would work. Quit playing with the books on the shelf and just control your kids. Good evening, Carrie Hozier, 10261 Wexford Lane. Um, I have a book here that I would like to just read a couple of lines, but not from a slant that anyone's mentioned. I do agree with a female that spoke about the mental health previously. Um, <clears throat> this grade level that this book is, is my child's age, is why I feel so compelled to bring this to your attention. Uh, just a couple of lines, and this is why it's so important to me. I just recently lost a family friend of mine to drugs. And so although this is not sexually explicit, this is something near and dear to my heart that I feel like could influence my child at this age. Um, and this is in part of the books here. And I just want to read a couple of lines. Um, Into death, reaching out for me, it touches my face, tempting me, it's easy. Maybe I should get buzzed. We talk for a long while, and after we hang up, I get buzzed. By the time Trey knocks on my door, I'm very buzzed and almost beyond caring that he has finally arrived. We seal the deal with a kiss and more. Yes, I'm still on my period, but you'd be surprised at all the things that we can do. Anyway, he's full of surprises, not just sexy ones. We make love even though our bodies work, but my brain is busy. Clean maintenance buzzed, we take my car home. Can't tell her about my new career, dealing with hookers, and so on and so on. I'm moving down the list. He kisses me and it's better than our very first kiss because I know it means more than just he's wanting to get into my pants. I consider that in shower, scrubbing off yesterday's sweat and last night's sex. We live in an endless, mindless cycling, buzzed. 
Barely buzzed, crash, buzzed again, recycling, buzzed, barely buzzed, crash, buzzed again, argumented by a different cycling, score, pay up, deal, score more, or depending on what's due, win, score, force checks, pay up, score more. We sell a lot of crystal. And so, gentlemen, here tonight, I just want to bring this to your attention because this is happening to our children. And if you're not aware, the state of Alabama received $29 million from mental health funds just last year, which affects our kids in public school. So if you think it's not affecting your child or your children and grandchildren here in Fairhope, it does in all children in Baldwin County. This is not just Fairhope's um, concern. This is all throughout Baldwin County and not just the public libraries. This also is happening in our schools. So what you do here also affects what you do for your children, your students, your constituents with their public school, which then infiltrates their lives at home. And not all kids have a good nuclear family unit. So you have to also take into account that all children don't have parents to run this by when they're in the library. It may be a caretaker. It may be an aunt and uncle who doesn't have full um, restriction over that child at all times. So I just wanted to bring this to your attention because Alabama does receive a lot of funds for mental health and I believe that this could be a lot underlying aspect as to why and I think this should be relocated. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lee Bancroft. Um, I live at 18632 Twin Beach Road in Fairhope, Alabama. And um, I just wanted to provide a few more things that haven't been mentioned. Um, but there is a lot of talk about mental health. So I'm an educator. I've been an educator for 25 years. I was also an Equal Opportunities Officer in the military in the United States Air Force. And um, I serve as children in the LGBTQ community every single day. And I can tell you that, and I'm saying this because most of the books that you're seeing on these lists are because they have some kind of LGBTQ content. And, um, and I service these students every day, and I can tell you that they experience a lot of trauma. And they talk about that trauma. And the trauma has to do not with their identities of the LGBTQ community, but because people do not affirm them, because their families and their communities do not affirm them. And when they read and access a book that affirms their identities, not only does it help them process these traumas, but then they are able to see that they are not alone, that they are not a problem, and so forth and so forth. So when you're talking about mental health, you have to be talking about what some of these ideas that you guys are espousing are doing to your children. And um, on another note, I'm also an educator. And we're not talking about what this will do to educators. Because the Moms for Liberty group is it does have a political agenda here, and so do others who are in this, in this room. And I've already seen what their agenda is doing to education with the DIE, or the DEI initiatives, and the, um, and the um, uh, uh, social emotional learning initiatives that Moms for Liberty has taken on. And I can tell you that it is creating a climate of fear for educators and librarians as well. And when your educators are afraid to talk and teach, as they know that they should, then you're effectively shutting down education. And so all this talk that you guys are doing right now, you're not talking about the impact that this is having on educators. And from an educator's perspective, it is not a good impact. So thank you. Hey, my name is Lindsay Windham. I live at 22811 Hillwood Road in Fairhope. Uh, in support of the Fairhope Library, I have a couple quick fact checks. Um, we've been fact checking live. Um, the salacious young adult books we've heard from tonight are an attempt to paint the picture that there are inappropriate books in the children's section. The books that have been called out are appropriately shelved in the teen or young adult sections, or adult sections. Boy Toy by Larry Liga is a cautionary tale against abuse sold by Patricia McCormick is anti-sex trafficking. Both are in the teen section and are recommended for upper grades. Glass by Ellen Hopkins, that was recently mentioned, uh, is a cautionary tale about addiction written by a mother and it's not in the Fairhope Library. Uh, according to someone who works with the library that we just checked with, the teen section is for 13 to 17. Uh, no, 12, uh, no children 12 and under are allowed to be in the library without a parent. We want the same thing to protect kids. But when we shield children against information about their bodies, we are only protecting the abusers and the predators. Neither of those books 
the books on the list or any in the Fair, Fairhope Public Library meets the legal definition of obscenity. The Miller test, which I'll spare you from, uh, has three uh, qualifications for what qualifies a work as obscenity, and that's taken as a whole or lacks serious literary, artistic, political, or scientific value. Um, and again, none of those books qualify as obscene. Uh, parents have the ultimate say in what kids can read and what their kids can read. Not y'all and not the government. And that's all. Thank you. All right, thank you all. Hey, can I? All right, thank you guys. We've heard. Are we still going? Yes. We, 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 we're going to. We have, we'll take. We had to stand up last, to get out of our seats. Yeah, I won't take long, sir. Yeah, you, you, you all two are the last two, okay? We, Woo! Yes, sir. We, that's, that's, that's enough. All right, my name's Randy Hosier at 10261 Wexford Lane. Um, I'm not going to go hash over what we've been talking about. I want to talk about a little reality. We talk about the appropriation of where the books should be. I don't think anybody with the agenda here is to remove any books from the library. I don't think we're here to censor that. We want relocation. I'll give you an example. When I was 15 years old, it was nothing more than I liked to get a hold of than a good hustler Playboy book. But guess where I had to go to get that? Where could I get it? I couldn't. Why? Because it was behind a counter. We had bookshelves in the magazine racks. We had them available to us. But guess wasn't, guess wasn't there was the sexually explicit material. So all we're asking for is that the, in the, the explicit material be shelved. And again, I've not been to a library, but I have been to one in Daphne. And I know that these books do exist there. And likewise, they're trying to make the same changes there as we're asking for here. So it's not about banning a book. Explore what you want to explore. Take your parents. Whatever you got to do to get your hands on the books. Your parents want you to read that book. God have mercy on you to read it. But just all we're here for is to say, let's get the explicit material out of the hands of the children. Allow the parents to make that choice. And let's live our lives. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Stephanie Dernan. I live on Hemlock Drive in Fairhope, Alabama. Mayor and Councilman, I hope that you're uncomfortable tonight, because we all certainly are, and we're uncomfortable on behalf of our children as well. The time has passed for private murmurings of agreement. The time is now to take a public stand and protect our children. Mayor and Councilman, if you refuse to move these books to the adult section, and stop the taxpayer funding of pornography that's available to our children, then be prepared to lose your jobs. All right, All right guys. Thank you, guys. Hey, can Thank I, you. Let, yeah, uh, let, me, yeah. let, me, let me say let me say one thing before we, we yeah. leave. Um, Brian, I wanted just to address something you said. I. I it, I don't believe I said that we don't fund the library. If I did, I apologize. That's obviously a misspoke. I think what I said is it's not the city council's job to decide where the library places the books, okay? And I think I've made it pretty clear tonight where I stand on what, sh what should be available to children and what should not. But let me just say this, because I think we're all here for the same reason, that we want our children to, to only see the good and not the bad until they're ready and able to handle what mature children need to see. I hope there were none watching tonight, not just for the obscene material that was read, but for how adults who disagree react to an opposing point of view, hissing, booing, yelling, and screaming. It is unacceptable behavior for adults. Okay, we as a group of people have got to be able to show children you can disagree but not act like you have lost your mind. Okay, and we have all got to do better, council included. 
okay? So let's all be better for our children because I believe ultimately that's what everybody in this room wants. So thank you. Yep. All right, thanks. All right, guys. Are we still doing our executive session? I'm tired. Yeah. We're still, yeah. So um, executive session. I'm going to read the executive session. Are we still doing executive session? Yeah. I don't want to do it. I'm tired. It's not a class already. No, we're not doing executive session. I know. Session. It's a wrap. I'll, I'll vote no if it's not necessary. Is it? I mean, do we? Yeah, because it. Yeah, I'm. T yeah. Yeah. All right. Can I get a motion for adjournment? So moved. Uh, do you have to amend the agenda to remove that, or can you just remove no? That we don't have a we don't have a publicized agenda, so we he never can, really have. He to can do just it. state his pool. What I understand from Lisa, we'll he just pull just it. State its pool. Yeah, we'll pull it. Pardon? We just go. Yeah, yeah, pull. yeah, we'll just pull. We'll pull item number twenty nine, and um, I'm asking for a motion for adjournment. I'll move to adjourn. I have a motion. I got a second. Hey. No, no, I have a motion and a second. Uh oh. Ma'am, would you please sit down, ma'am? Click, ma'am. Ma'am, ma'am, oh please sit down. Yeah, can I got a motion. Do I have a second for adjournment? I mean, I don't even know what we were planning on talking about or how urgent I just talked was. to the so mayor. Not, not urgent. Motion for what? All right. Adjournment. Yeah. No. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I got you. I'm just, yeah. I have a motion and a second. Motion to adjourn? I made the motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? All right, I have a motion and a second. Adjourn. Right.